Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Christian Colavelli. I am the product manager of effects pedals at Eventide and welcome to AES 2020. We're coming to you from Eventide Studios and to my right I have the illustrious Colin Bevan, product manager of plugins at Eventide and he is engineering a session we have pulled up. And today I'm going to be using our latest pedal, the Black Hole to help create a modern rock track and we'll be providing a lot of different layers and textures. And I am going into the Kemper and the black hole is in the effects loop. So let's take it away. Okay, so we have this Pro Tools session pulled up and right now we have a drum and bass track laid down. So Colin, why don't you play that so we can put it in context and get a feel for the vibe of the session. Cool. So that's one full loop. And there's a lot of different ways you can approach this. Personally, I like to knock out the percussive stuff first. So over that part, I'm hearing a palm muted, arpeggiated chordal thing, maybe polyrhythmic. And I would utilize black hole like a medium reverb to really accentuate that. And as you can see in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, we have Eventide Device Manager pulled up and we have a preset that we've tweaked that's going to help me articulate this part or formulate this part that I have uh, in my head that I think can work with that driving drum and bass track. So let's uh, take a crack and audition the part and see what it sounds like. Okay. So just to give you a brief rig rundown, I am currently using a Gibson The Paul II. This is actually my first electric guitar. It's been through hell and back. All the pain is like worn off the back of the neck. Uh, it's actually a thin body Les Paul and it's got a really, really unique character. And uh, I love using it for stuff like this. It really works in like a, uh, a modern rock context that we have pulled up right now. So I have a, just a basic clean Mesa setting on the Kemper and I'm gonna play what that sounds like right now just so you can hear it, so. So there's a little bit of breakup. Okay, so Colin, just uh, hit black hole and call up the preset that we have, that we've created, so here we go. So check out the depth of that just created. Beautiful, nice 3D character, but not too much. Just right, just the right amount of feedback for this part. So again, play, that, play the uh, loop that we have. Okay, so I was thinking that arpeggiated like polyrhythmic type thing, be something like, Something along those lines. So. Right? So the black hole's really accentuating the kind of palm muted thing, like, again. Just giving it the right depth. It's almost a haunting character, and it gives it personality. So I, I really dig it. Okay, we're gonna do a take, or try a take. Okay, so we have that, that first arpeggiated, kind of polyrhythmic, palm muted part laid down, and it's good enough for rock and roll. We got the, got the right vibe, got right? 
Um, and now the next part we're gonna lay down, I am thinking will be a single note, really heavy delay laden line that will blend in with that kind of arpeggiated palm muted thing and create a nice layer or series of layers that we can, you know, keep building on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to tap into another preset and thankfully, Black Hole has delay on tap. Um, so the next preset it, that uh, comes to mind is actually Dark Matter. It's in the first five factory presets and you know I'm familiar with it because I played this thing so much and that, since it has delay baked into it, is a good starting point. So Colin, why don't you queue up Dark Matter and play the track and let's hear what it sounds like. Okay. Okay, let me stop you right there. So Colin, uh, before we took that, actually synced um, the black hole to the session, which is at 92 BPM. I was thinking more about an eighth note delay line, so Colin, I'm gonna have you double that to 184. Okay. Okay, and also I need, I think we need more feedback. I'm thinking about a really, really lush delay sound here. Sure. So more feedback, and let's bring that cue up, which is the resonance, so we're gonna get a different kind of EQ point to start with. Just make it a little bit brighter. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. That's getting there. I think that's pretty close, actually. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, with layering a bunch of guitars, I think it's probably important for us to keep in mind the lows. Okay, so we'll take some lows out, actually. Yeah. Because obviously, reverb is going to fill out the low end. On. Right, exactly. That's it. Okay, that's perfect, man. So, so why don't we actually lay that down? Sure. Okay. That's the right. That's the right idea, right? Yeah. I mean, that's perfect. So we have this super heavy delay laden part, creating this alternate atmosphere on top of that kind of tight arpeggiated polyrhythmic part, mm -hmm. and they really blend together nice. And as you can hear, that feedback from Black Hole is absolutely perfect. Um, so that is going to give us a nice kind of um, bed to lay the next part over, which we will tackle now. Okay, so now that we have that single note delay line meshed with the arpeggiated palm muted part, and we have a nice bed to build off of, the next thing that I'm thinking is how to create a synth-like texture in the absence of a synth. So I wanna do chordal swells, basically, to mimic you know, a synth, since I'm just a guitar player, and the black hole allows me to do that. So the preset Parsec is employing inverse gravity, which will have the reverb kind of suck in on itself and give you this inverse swell. So Colin, we're, let's play the track and I'll, uh, let's start auditioning presets again. Okay, so stop that. 
So right off the bat, I think we've got to we've got to tweak a few things here. We've got to mess with gravity. Actually, the first thing that we should really do is sync this thing. So okay. I'm thinking again. Let's go with the eighth note uh, vibe. So let's go 184. Okay. Let's hear how the mix all the way up, right? For this. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so we got to definitely roll roll off the highs there for sure. We can also break up the resonance with adding some more of the modulation depth in there. Good call. Absolutely. Already sounds better. What do you think about gravity there? Uh, it might be a little bit too long of a delay. Okay, so let's manipulate that a bit. So if we bring it closer to 12 o'clock, that will swell in sooner. Yes, that's flat. exactly right. So basically we wanna have these swells kinda of happen more on the pick attack rather than this kind of anticipated thing. So by Colin bringing the gravity down to zero, we're gonna accomplish that, or closer to zero, I should say. Yeah. Okay, so let's hear what that sounds like. That's cool, man. Yeah. Very Holdsworthian, which I <laughs> always like. Okay, so let's, why don't we play, uh, put this in the context of a track and see what it sounds like. So we want to take the delay down. So. Definitely, definitely. I was just going to suggest that because that's really kind of um, getting in the way of the pick attack. Again, we want to have this respond more on the top end rather than on the later mm -hmm. end of the, uh, you know, the note value, I guess, right? And then um, just to create a little bit more of that space, we can add some feedback to that. Yes, yes. We want, we want the swell to kind of tail um, at the end. And you know, just to again fill out the mix, we're trying, we're going for this real uh, ethereal vibe, so that will help, you know, bring more of this ambient atmosphere to the table. So let's uh, let's actually track this. All right. That's, that's, that's working, man. I'm that's the right it. idea. So now, just to uh, recap, we have that arpeggiated palm muted part with a delay part with this synthy kind of sound design chordal swell thing. So that's not even really functioning as a guitar part. That's just functioning as a, again, a sound texture. design tool, right, a texture. So we have a really nice kind of um, clean part to build on. And now the next thing that I would attack is kind of just blips and bloops, like ethereal kind of sound effects that we can get with this with this pedal, pick scrapes, uh, maybe some harmonics, but uh, you know, Colin and I, we'll, we'll go through it and we'll see what happens. Cool. Okay, so now we have our three parts locked in, and we're going to add some ear candy now. And what I mean by ear candy is like maybe just some type of subtle texture or little effect. It could be a pick scrape. It could be a 
like I said, a harmonic or, you know, something across the strings in the back. Oftentimes I find that like these little ear candy parts end up becoming some of the most memorable things in the song. Uh, you know, it's it might be something that you're not super familiar with hearing all the time. So as a listener, you're instantly drawn to that sound and you're like, oh my God, what is that? That's And, and the black hole obviously is a great, um, uh, a great kind of springboard to create these textures. Mm -hmm. So we have queued up this preset called Train Tracks. Right, Colin? Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to give you an idea of what that sounds like. So the first thing that I noticed there is we need to get some delay involved in there, okay. right? So. Here's a little trick with black hole. If the size is all the way down and the gravity is all the way up, it will essentially, it can basically function as a delay pedal. Okay, so I'm thinking like a, a polyrhythmic delay over this part. So again, like a triplet type feel, like a wah, 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 wah. Okay, so we can tap that in. So yeah, why don't you tap it in? That's a function in uh, Eventide Device Manager. Yep. So play the track. Yeah, that, that's that's right. Okay, so stop it. So we're right around. I would say that's around 122, right, Colin? Somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah, I can even make that even. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay, so. I think we should bring the cue down a little bit, right? Yeah, feedback was pretty good. Um, maybe the, maybe the size, size bring bit. it up a little bit, just so we get some some more reverb back in in there. Mm -hmm. You know, to fill it out. Okay, so and what uh, about mix? The mix we can. Why don't we? Yeah, just roll off it a little bit. Bring it back. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so let's play that and see what it sounds like. Okay. I think that's getting there. What do you think? Where, okay, set, stop it. Should we should we tweak the low end a little bit there? Yeah, we could we could remove some lows, especially for if you just want to sprinkle it in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's kind of getting lost a little bit. So maybe if we take some out, we can, you know, tame it, tame it that way. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. So let's, <laughs> yeah, I already like that. Okay, so let's try it one more time. Instantly better. Okay, cool. So why don't we record that? Let's get let's just get it in a few sparse parts there. Cool. Love it. So that's super cinematic. You know, that's a nice kind of icing on top. Maybe Colin decides to use some of those. He doesn't have to use every one. Mm -hmm. We could use every one. We could be totally gratuitous. I mean, you know, that's that's up to 
to the producer engineer at the end of at the uh, the end of the day, <laughs> right? But it's easy to get into this territory, and yeah, I mean, look at how uh, quickly we were able to come up with like a functional sound effect. I mean, just with a few simple tweaks and understanding, you know, how to control some of these parameters. So, so great. I mean, I think we've made a lot of progress here. Why don't we finish up this tune by adding in some some tremolo pick parts? Because, I mean, if you're gonna have a tune like this without a tremolo picked part with reverb on it, you might as well throw it in the trash. That's like an absolute essential. And um, I might abuse that a bit, but I don't care because it's perfect. It sounds great. So uh, let's let's work on Good that next. Shot. Yeah, totally. Okay, so now for this next part, we're gonna build an intensity. And as I described before, we're gonna implement some tremolo picking. So the first thing we need to do is change the patch on the Kemper. And we've selected uh, a Rivera profile, which is basically a gain. Gain heavy air. So that will help blend with the black hole and give me the sustain I need to really make that tremolo part pick out or stand out. <laughs> um, okay, so we have selected transfigured, which is a good starting point for this tremolo picking stuff. And let's just play it real quick with the track and see what it sounds like. Okay, so right off the bat, let's stop. So the mix needs to be adjusted for that, for sure. Yeah. We gotta bring that up, because that was barely present. And let's roll off the feedback a little bit. Yeah, that's hanging on too long. And what do you think, uh, highs? And then, yeah, we can kind of bring give it, it that plate like Just let it cut a little bit, yeah. Okay. Let's give that a shot. Okay, cool. That's it. It's better. That's way better. That's cool. So why don't we why don't we track that? Yep. That's good. That's the, that's the right vibe. You know, the trick to that part is, those types of parts is to just, I, this is gonna sound so obvious, but play the right notes. You've gotta really just pick a few notes that you can really hang on to and not overkill it because you wanna let the tremolo pick, the tremolo pick kind of concept in conjunction with the actual effect shine through. So you don't wanna muddy that up with too much. Mm -hmm. You've got to kind of find the right um, happy medium. So why don't we, that being said, why don't we lay one more part over that? Let's do a harmony part. I'm, I'm kind of hearing something. Sure. Well, let's take a long. crack at it. Okay, so now we're going to lay a harmony down on top of that tremolo pick part, but we're only going to do it the second time. We're gonna let the, let the first part breathe a little bit and then we are going to build upon it the last time through. And that's how I like to approach these things. I like to kind of let that initial part speak so the listener can really digest what's happening and then add in the, um, the harmony to further accentuate the part. Okay, and we're gonna use the same preset because I like that kind of tremolo pick uh, transfigured thing happening, mm -hmm. and it should blend pretty well. Okay, so uh, should we take a crack at it? 
Yeah. Let's audition. Let's audition it. Sure. Okay, so here's the first time through. Now I'm going to come in right now. Something along those lines, you know what I mean? Maybe rhythmically it could change it. Or something like that, to just kind of to build off that first part that we introduced way back when, you know? Mm -hmm. Kind of echoes that. Okay, so uh, let's try to track it and see what happens. All right, here we go. That sounds pretty cool. I'm into it. All right, let's leave it. Okay, so we're at the end of the road, but it really wouldn't be a uh, tune that I played on without a solo section, a Christian Caldwell solo section. So we're gonna fly in one chorus and I'll just improv something. And we're gonna use that same kind of black hole preset and just tweak it a little bit to make it fit within a lead context. So here is the actual tone. So it might sound a little bit much out of the context of the mix, but I think within the mix, that's going to actually work, but we'll see. Right? Use the same trick as before, turning the size down and the gravity up to make this more of a delay preset. Too. Right, right. You want the delay. On a lead tone, I really prefer uh, delay to take the forefront rather than reverb. I don't like kind of hiding behind the reverb, and I like the delay to just push it, push the frequency just a little bit and give me something to kind of soar with, you know? Okay, let's give that a shot. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that's that's a wrap on on this uh, session. Uh, got a lot of stuff laid down, and um, yeah, as you can see, it was super versatile, and that's thanks to the black hole, which really you know garnered a lot of inspiration and let us kind of nail all the textures we were looking for, you know. Yeah. So just to recap, let's go through all of the parts we created. So obviously, the session we started the session with just a drum and bass track. And I immediately knew that I wanted to lay down a palm muted rhythmic kind of um, arpeggio part. And I like to always get my, my low register rhythmic stuff recorded first because that gives you kind of the canvas to paint over along with the bass and drums. You know, you want to go from low to high, or I like to work like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's, there's rare examples, but that's general, the general rule. Okay, so after that, we laid down the single note heavy delay line, which gave us that um, kind of alternate atmosphere, just another layer that we were looking for. It blended really well with the rhythmic um, guitar part and the bass and the drums. Then after that, since I am just the guitar player in this session, we don't have a synth player, we utilized the black hole uh, to create pads. And I did those chordal swells, and that really, really filled out the mix. And then finally we put, or not finally, but <laughs> next we, we laid down some ear candy uh, with the pick scrapes. Again, that's uh, something that you may want to consider in your own mix 
because it... That's an embellishment. Mainly. Yeah, it yeah. lets the listener kind of like lock in on something that they might not be anticipating, and it just, you know, it makes your, your, your tune or whatever you're working on more distinct. Mm -hmm. Then we laid down the tremolo picked parts, and we went to the lead tone on the Kemper and created that nice kind of uh, preset on Black Hole that really allows the lead tone to blend with the reverb, and that's essential. Um, and then we laid a harmony on top of that, and then finally we just kind of worked out a solo at the very end. And now we're gonna listen to the track after Colin put you know, his magic touches on it, and we'll, you'll hear a fully produced track. to thank you for joining this session with us and we hope that you can utilize some of these techniques in your own rock mix and maybe get some ideas and and maybe check out the black hole because it's really a fantastic tool and as you can see it's useful in the studio as well and it's just another vein that this thing excels so uh, yep if you have any questions again hit me and call up and we'll see you on the we'll catch you on the flip side Cheers.